I'm going to show you how to potentially triple your node applications performance using multi-threading. This is an important tutorial because the methods and examples shown will give you what you need to set up production ready thread management. But you have to stick with me till the end because I first explain some gotchas before showing off the good stuff. So let's get started. For the longest time nodes had the ability to be multi-threaded by either using child processes, clustering or the more recent preferred method of a module called worker threads. Child processes were the initial means of creating multiple threads for your application and have been available since version 0.10. This was achieved by spawning a node process for every additional thread you wanted created. Clustering, which has been a stable release since around version 4, allows you to simplify the creation and management of child processes. Finally, we have worker threads, which was introduced in version 10 and became stable in version 12. Unlike child processes, with worker threads, no additional node processes are created. All threads get created for one node runtime and they are also able to share memory, which is not the case for the former. This makes worker threads the preferred option in most cases due to it being simpler and less resource intensive. Now before we get into multi-threading your application, there are a few points that you need to fully understand. There is a layer of node that's already multi-threaded and that is the libuv thread pool. IO tasks such as files and folder management, TCP UDB transactions, compression and encryption are handed off to libuv and if are not asynchronous by nature, get handled in the libuv's thread pool. So why is this important? It means that the implementing multi-threading using child processes or worker threads will only be effective for your synchronous JavaScript code that's performing heavy-duty operations, such as looping, calculations, etc. If you try to offload I.O. tasks, for example, to worker threads, you will not see a performance improvement. The third note is that creating one additional thread in your app is easy enough and there are tons of tutorials on how to do so. However, creating threads equivalent to the number of logical cores your machine or VM is running and managing the distribution of work to these threads is way more advanced and to code this logic is above most of our pay grades. Thank goodness we're in a world of open source and brilliant contributions from the Node community, meaning there's already a module that will give us full capability of dynamically creating and managing threads based on CPU availability on our machine or VM. The module we'll be working with today is called Worker Pool. Created by Joss de Jong, apologies if I said that wrong, Worker Pool offers an easy way to create a pool of workers for both dynamically offloading computations as well as managing a pool of dedicated workers. It's basically a thread pool manager for Node, supporting worker threads, child processes and web workers for browser-based implementations. Just quickly, a big shout out to Joss for contributing such a powerful tool that has saved me alone weeks worth of development and testing. For those who also find value in this module, showing gratitude is sometimes as easy as starring his GitHub repo, of which I will have a link to in this description. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you are notified when I publish new videos. Now, to make use of the worker pool module in our application, the following tasks will need to be performed. First, we need to install worker pool via NPM. Next, we will need to initialize the worker pool on launch of our app. We will then need to create a middleware layer between our heavy duty JS logic and the worker pool that will manage it. Finally, we need to update our app to hand off heavy duty tasks to the worker pool when required. We finally get to the fun part of this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to action the items mentioned before and properly implement thread pool management in our application. Here we have a node application that holds code samples for all the videos that form part of my node performance optimization series. This source code is available on GitHub and I will definitely provide links in the description to both the code and the video playlist. In the multi-threading folder, I've already created the resources and logic for our demonstration. This is to save on time, however I will take you through each line of code. In the worker pool folder, we have two files. One is the controller logic for the worker pool and the other holds the functions that will be triggered by the threads, aka the middleware layer I mentioned earlier on. In the controller is where we require the worker pool module. We also have two functions that we export called init and get. The init function will be executed once during the load of our application. It instantiates the worker pool with options we'll provide 
links to thread functions and creates a proxy that will be held in memory for as long as our application is running. The get function simply returns the, 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 memory, the in memory proxy. In the thread functions, we create worker functions that will be managed by the worker pool. For, for our example today, we're going to be using bcrypt.js to hash passwords. This usually takes around 10 milliseconds depending on the speed of your machine and makes for a good use case when it comes to heavy duty tasks. Inside the utilities.js file is the function and logic that hashes the password. All we are doing in the thread functions is executing the bcrypt hash via the worker pool function. This allows us to keep the code centralized and avoid duplication or confusion where, uh, of where certain operations exist. The .env file holds the port number and sets the node env variable to production for our example. It's also where we specify if we want to enable or disable the worker pool by setting the worker pool enable variable to 1 or 0. We will be using this later. Finally, our app.js holds the code that will be executed on launch of our app. First, we initialize the variables in the .env file. We then set up an express app and create a root called bcrypt. When this root is triggered, we will check to see if the worker pool is enabled. If yes, we get a handle on the worker pool proxy and execute the bcrypt hash function that we declared in the thread functions JS file. This will be in turn executed, oh, excuse me, this will in turn execute the bcrypt hash function in utilities and returns us the result. If the worker pool is disabled, we simply execute the bcrypt function uh, directly in utilities. At the bottom of our app.js, you'll see that we have a self-calling function. We're doing this to support async await, which we are using when we're interacting with the worker pool. Here is where we initialize the worker pool if it's enabled. The only config we want to override in this case is setting the min workers to max. This will ensure that the worker pool will spawn as many worker threads as there are logical cores on our machine, with the exception of one logical core which is used for our main thread. In my case, I have six physical cores with hyperthreading, meaning I have 12 logical cores. So with min worker set to max, the worker pool will create and manage 11 worker threads. Finally, we start our server and we will be listening on port 6000. For our first test, let's disable the worker pool, run a basic test, then perform a 10 second load test to see how many requests per second we can successfully execute. We'll be using AutoCannon for our load testing, but you are welcome to use whatever tool you prefer that can interact with web APIs. So let's start our server. And let's perform a basic curl request against the bcrypt endpoint. We can see that we successfully returned a hash value. Let's now perform a load test using AutoCannon. We just replace the curl with AutoCannon and hit enter. This will run for 10 seconds. Once completed, we can see the average request per second is around 58. We're now going to repeat this test, but with the worker pool enabled. So let's go and set the worker pool enabled to 1 in the .env file, restart the server. We can now see in the console that worker threads is enabled, the min and max workers are set to 11, and the worker type is auto. In my case, it will see I'm using node version 14, and will use worker threads. If you're, using, if you're running a version prior to 12, it will use child processes, uh, child processes instead. Let's run a basic curl test just to make sure it's working. There we go, we get our hash value as a response. Now let's perform a load test. Look at that. At least a 500% increase in requests per second. Can you imagine the possibilities if you start porting all your heavy duty tasks to the worker pool? All you have to do is take the example I've provided today, add middleware functions in the thread functions JS file as we did for bcrypt hash and execute these functions accordingly. So that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. If yes, please give this video a thumbs up and to stay tuned for more, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, cheers.